welcome to Career Center. I am Kimberly White, Executive Director of the Community Career Center, a resource center located in Naperville. If you're unemployed, underemployed, or seeking a career change, this show is for you. Career Center will bring human resource professionals and other experts together to provide job search tips to assist you as you search for your next success. Today we have with us Drew Robertson from DMARC Communications. Drew's gonna to talk to us a little bit about um, sales and how to sell yourself in a job search. Correct. So Drew, um, just recently uh, you were at the Career Center. Yes. And you put on a fabulous workshop that was well received by Thank our you. clients. And I want you to just talk a little bit about that. Yes, uh, so DMARC Communications is something that I do on the side. It's something that I use to give back to the community. Uh, because we all have kind of been in the job market at some point Absolutely. in our life post-college, right? Uh, the workshop that was at your career center, uh, I enjoyed myself because the audience, I could tell that the audience was engaged, uh, that they clearly were interested in the subject matter. Absolutely. So some of the things you talked about, and a, kind of a big thing that we always talk about is branding. Yes. Um, Branding yourselves, being a product. I mean, tell me a little bit about how, how does someone go about branding themselves? Right. Well, in one of the things that I try to discuss is that branding is important, uh, but branding is the marketing aspect. It's the strategic level in the job search. Branding includes the idea that you're going to have a LinkedIn profile, that you're probably going to maybe have social media, Facebook, maybe a Twitter account. Mm -hmm. That's the branding part. Uh, then positioning yourself as the product, most people aren't comfortable with thinking that they are a product that they have then have to present into the job interview. That's where I get into it because they are. And thus, they have to then sell themselves. So the sales aspect is actually a tactical level that complements the marketing aspect, which is the strategic level. So what are some tips on how do they go about selling themselves? Right. Right, they kind of have to break down uh, what their functions are in terms of are they if they are a, um, a CPA or an accountant, mm -hmm. are they an engineer? What type of an engineer? There's different types. Obviously, there's mm -hmm. mechanical and electrical. Well, in the IT telecommunications industry, you can have a varying uh, yeah. of, of degrees and right. stuff and, and certifications. Right. That's the first step. You have to discuss who you are and how you promote that product, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. uh, to meet the needs of the, of the HR person that you're interviewing with. Mm -hmm. The job description will have some of that, right. and you try to match those skill sets, mm -hmm. but then you have to become the person again, and when you're in the interview, that's when the selling is starting. Mm -hmm. So when you're describing who you are, it's important, I, I would imagine you, you, you talk about this, not to go on and on and on. You need to have that defined. Yes. Uh, you'll hear the term the 30 second elevator mm -hmm. pitch, right? You do have to have that defined, but it can't be canned. Mm -hmm. It's There's a fine balance, right? It has to be you. You, right. you have to come out, right? right? But at the same time, you have to be succinct. You have to be clear, uh -huh. right? And you also have to actually ask them more questions uh, to understand what they're really looking, looking for. for. Yes. So when you're, so you talk about, you know, who you are, your name, your, you know, that type of information, but a couple of different adjectives that you... Right, right. So coming back to the idea of, uh, if I may use this coffee cup as an example. So if this is the product, right, and I am the engineer, let's just uh -huh. say, I need to split out the fact that I have these skill sets that says I am, this is my product uh -huh. that I can bring to the table. I need to differentiate that self, though, with who I am as the mm -hmm. person. Can I work together on your team, mm -hmm. right? Because the other part of the selling process is, is will you, do you want to work with me, right? right? right. Uh, am I someone that can get along, mm -hmm. right? Am I someone that is coachable? Mm -hmm. uh, can I bring value to the organization besides the skill set? Right. Right. Because they may talk to 10 engineers in the interview but which one stands out in terms of that rapport? Right. And, and is there a thing as um, saying too much? Absolutely. That is actually the death nail. Yeah. Um, and again, it's a, it's a fine balance because the, the interviewer will ask you questions on your resume. Right. And, and you have to answer those questions, right? right? However, 
we don't want to what we call a data dump. We don't want to do a data dump where we're just just spilling out information right. uh, on and on. Again, it has to be clear, concise, and very articulate to the point of the question they're asking. And then you actually be quiet. You ask a question, and then you be quiet again, and you listen. Yeah. That's the key. It's hard sometimes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. It's very hard. Okay, you also talk about um, how social media is different from selling. Correct. Let's talk uh, a little bit about that. We, we actually opened up with that. Uh, mm -hmm. The idea that social media is that branding, mm -hmm. right? Social media is very important. Mm -hmm. In today's market, you have to have it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are in the business environment, the majority of your peers are on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. The majority of human resource uh, personnel are scanning LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that presence. Right. But that's not selling. That's, we refer to the funnel, right? That is bringing, that is your advertising, bringing people to the funnel so that as you come down the funnel and you have qualified prospects, meaning uh, companies that you want to work for that fit your skill set, mm -hmm. Now you start the sales process. Mm -hmm. The sales process is very different uh, than the marketing process. Mm -hmm. So um, you want to talk a little bit about that, the sales process? Sure. Then? Yeah. Sure. So again, I use the word funnel. Mm -hmm. um, in my profession, and, and anyone who carries a, a sales title knows exactly what I'm okay. talking about. But again, other people who are not in that profession, they may kind of wonder what that is. Uh, and I go into that in our, in our presentations, mm -hmm. and I split out the stages of the funnel. One of the key aspects is you need to know where you're at in the funnel, what phase you are in the funnel, mm -hmm. right? Again, if, I'm a, if I may use the V, so the V, <laughs> right, 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 the top of the funnel, that's where all the marketing's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm filling that funnel. Mm -hmm. As I come down to what I call a qualified prospect, meaning a company that I know that I can fill that skill set, a company that I probably have talked with someone, at least a recruiter, mm -hmm. and there's a potential match, mm -hmm. right? Now I've gotten into the phase where I'm at the bottom of the funnel and I need to separate out how I'm going to go into that interview and be very assertive, mm -hmm. right? And that's where I need to then know myself well enough and my, my skill sets as a product to be able to, quote unquote, sell that, mm -hmm to the interviewer. Okay. Um, so we're coming to the close of our session. One thing I want to ask you is you, you talk about um, when people are, when they're not comfortable selling themselves, right. one thing to help them overcome that fear, what's one thing you would share with them? The biggest thing is, is the rejection of no. Mm -hmm. It's not personal. Yeah. It's not personal. And in our, uh, uh, in our classes that we both sponsor, uh, I, did, I get into that, uh -huh. and that there is a, an actual mathematical rhythm that so many no's actually do produce a yes. Okay. That's a hard concept, but it hard is true. Concept. Well, Drew, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you, so much. you yes. coming in today and meeting with me. Absolutely. Um, up next, motivational speaker and author, Connor Kinney. it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. So, I'm kinda new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. 
Welcome back to Career Center. We are excited to have with us motivational speaker and author, Connor Kaneen. Connor, welcome back. Kim, how are you? Good, thank you. So Connor, we've been talking for the last few months about your book, um, one of three books I believe you have now, um, Chief Gap. And um, we focused the first few months on the first three letters. I want you to just give us a, a review of the first three letters that we talked about. Right, okay. Chief Gab is a, an acronym for eight building blocks to staying sane, motivated, and productive in job search. And if the job seeker adopts and adapts those building blocks, I think it really will help them to stay sane, motivated, and productive. And the acronym spells out the S is for structure. Sure important to have a clear structure. Mm -hmm. H is about help and helping others and when you help others you'll get to pay back yourself. E is about the environment that you create and make sure that you've got a positive environment and you're not spending all of your time working at home on your own which you weren't used to doing before. And then I which we want to talk about today is about improving yourself and being able to show to the recruiter that you're a better candidate now than when you left your last position. Okay, so in your book, you, you, it, when you talk about improvement, there's two things you really focus on, on in right. that. So let's talk about the first one, and that is improving yourself for transition. Yeah. Can you yeah. Or elaborate impro on that? Improving yourself uh, during the transition. My basic view, Kim, is that the, the job seeker needs to be able to show that they are proactive to the mm -hmm. recruiter. And one of the best ways to do that is that if the recruiter says to you, how have you improved yourself during the job search? And if you can answer that in a positive way, you're going to do better than the person who kind of looks at the recruiter blankly and says, well, uh, I've just been job searching. I haven't had a chance to improve myself. I don't believe that. Part of the job process you should be going through is to find ways to improve yourself. So that, for instance, if you're in admin or in a secretarial uh -huh. role or something like that, you can improve your skill set on Word, on PowerPoint, on Excel, things like that, uh -huh. at no cost. Right. And that's what I'm saying. And you know, we've tried to keep Absolutely. the cost down at the mm -hmm. career center. And people can say, I'm a better person now than when I left my last job. Right. I'm a better admin person or I'm a better yeah. this or better that I'm, because of A, B, C, or D. Yeah, yeah. And being able to um, uh, talk about those in a job uh, uh, interview. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I think one of the things, going back to the, the, the first element of uh, Chief Gab, which is structure, one of the things the job seeker should do is actually structure some time each week, preferably even each day, to say, this half hour or this one hour is something I'm going to do to improve myself mm. so that I can walk into that interview and say to the imp uh, recruiter, I have improved myself. I'm a better candidate now than I was four weeks ago, eight weeks ago when I was left off. Okay, and when you talk about improve yourself, are you just talking about skill set or are you talking about mindset as well? Like I, I'm talking about uh, both, both because I think if you improve your, your skill set, you're going to improve your, your mindset as well. Mm -hmm. And we both know that job search is a mind game. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. it eats into people. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, it'll just swallow you up and suffocate you. And, uh, job search what you've got to try and do is find ways to stay motivated. It's not easy, mm -hmm. uh, and job seekers know that. But if you improve your skill set, if you feel better about yourself because you've improved your skill set, you're going to feel better walking into that interview as well, and you're going to look more confident right. as, as well. So 30 minutes or so a day when you're doing your job search, take some time just to focus on improving your Yeah, skills. yeah. Right so, into your calendar yeah. my, at uh, 4 p.m. today for one hour or whatever it is, I will do something to specifically improve myself and convince the interviewer that I have improved myself. Okay, all right. Yeah. So the other thing you talk about is improving yourself for the interview. Yeah. You say it's critical. Uh, it is. I mean, the analogy I use in the, in the book is that if you've got uh, John and Mary who are going for one job, and John has been in paid employment for the last four years, but Mary has been in job search Sorry. for the last six okay. months, John is probably going to walk into that interview looking more confident than mm -hmm. Mary is. but. So you're at a disadvantage as a mm -hmm. job seeker immediately. What Mary has got to do is to be able to pump herself up and feel good, look good, and present well mm -hmm. at that interview. And you can do that. I'm not saying it's easy, but if you can be positive and upbeat for the 45 minutes or 60 minutes of the interview, it will make a, an impact on that recruiter. Mm -hmm. And there are ways that you can do that. Okay. Do you want to share some of those? I know right. you talk in the book about grooming and... Yeah, uh, and it, it's basically that uh, when you get beaten up and disappointed so often, you're bound to show it in your body language. Uh -huh. But we are creatures of our environment, and if you can, the concept I use is positive in, mm. positive out. Mm -hmm. So one of the things a job seeker should do in preparing for the interview, and this will take four or five days before the interview, structure, again the first building block, uh -huh. structure some time to get positive in so you can project positive out. Uh -huh. 
And that would be things like, if you have a favorite movie or a favorite comedy series, watch that consistently in a structured way for a few days before yeah. the interview. Okay. If you've got a favorite book or artist that you really like, listen to them consistently. Mm -hmm. We're a job search is a mind game. We're creatures of our mm -hmm. environment, which mm -hmm. we spoke about previously. But if you can develop a concept and a process for positive in, you can project that mm -hmm. at the interview. Mm -hmm. um, any other tips on that before we? Well, I think one of the simplest ones I, I really do suggest to people is that if you can walk into the interview with a smile on your face, mm -hmm. what's the interviewer going to do? Right. Smile, smile back, back at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So one of the simplest ways to feel, have a smile on your face is listen to comedy or humor before you go into the interview. So listen to uh, Connor on the radio. Oh, not necessarily. <laughs> that, that's one of the things. I mean, I do have a couple of good right. clips on the Irish on my YouTube, mm -hmm. Irishman Speaks. But whoever your favorite comedian yeah. is, and it, that's going to get the endorphins yeah. going. You're going to feel better about right. yourself. Uh, it's not easy, but you can do it for the yeah. 45 minutes or hour of that interview. Walk in positive. If you're feeling low 90 minutes later, that's okay. The recruiter yeah. doesn't know that, but you've presented yourself right. well. I think I read, or remind me, did I read something in, in, in the book about um, uh, turn the radio up, blast it, sing really loud or something? <laughs> that what you said something? Well, basically, I, I use the kind of lines that if you're just listening to country music all, all of the time, right. which is yeah. all the sad songs, and your know, grandmother died and <laughs> the cat ran away, music. they are great. But I mean, what you should be doing is listening to Metallica or punk music or something <laughs> like that. Or the alternative is that if you're listening to Metallica all the time, do something different, different. as well. But uh, if that goes back to changing yeah. your environment. Yeah. So positive in, positive out, positive out. Yeah, very yeah. good. It, it's a powerful concept, mm -hmm. uh, and it can be done. So Connor, um, what have you been doing lately? Tell me, what do you have going on? And uh, well, I by the time this will have aired, I will have spoken at uh, last uh, at uh, Tug in St okay. Charles. So um, that program in Tug at St Charles went really well, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. It's like those uh, for late night shows when they're recording at four o'clock, right. and you got to remember what time it's on. But uh, basically, what I'm trying to do at the moment is I'm trying to just do a little bit of a revamp on my book, uh, Sheaf Gap, mm -hmm. staying sane, motivated, and productive. Mm -hmm. It's out on uh, Kindle at mm -hmm. two ninety nine, mm -hmm. and that's a real steal, I think, mm -hmm. for people who are in, in job search. And uh, there'll be an updated, a slightly updated version of that. But I mean, the concept is the same. And uh, I really do think that the, the work that the Community Career Centre is doing mm -hmm. just helps so much people in job search because it helps them to put structure right. into their day. They right. can see the benefit of being helped by you and Becky and other people mm -hmm. like that as well. And it also is changing the environment for people. They're getting right. out of the house. They're going to a place that, that, that's working. So the Community Career Centre all right, I'm biased, I'm on the board, I know you well and Becky were, but it's a fantastic organization right. that does so much for so many people. All right. Well, thank you, I appreciate you saying that. It's the holidays, tell me one tip to job seekers for the holidays. Uh, don't believe that jobs are not out there during the holidays, keep at it. When you were back in your previous uh, paid employment, your employer did not stop employing and recruiting mm. during the holiday period, keep at it. Absolutely, well, Connor Kinney, thank you so much. Thank you, Kim, appreciate it. take care, take enjoy care. it, take care. Good things happen at the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County. Experience, more than 25,000 acres where native plants and animals make their home. Discover the scenic beauty of over 60 forest preserves containing forests, prairies, and wetlands. Explore the wonder of changing seasons along 145 miles of trails. Get outside and discover the good things that happen when you visit DuPage Forest Preserves. The Forest Preserve District of DuPage County, where good things happen. Hey, my name's Katie and I'm in the ninth grade. I'm an A average student and I'm an athlete working towards a scholarship. And everybody tells me how much potential I have. But I just wish someone would tell me where my next meal is coming from. Katie, how'd I do? Do you have to be so serious? Well, I mean, I did like a crazy dance in a movie if you want me to like, you know, do a little, no. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Today, more than ever before, women are on the front lines of America's defense. These brave women struggle and sacrifice to help keep our country secure. 
they deserve to be recognized for their service as guardians of freedom. Please support the American Legion's efforts to serve the growing number of women veterans. Go to legion.org slash honor veterans to find out how you can help. Hello and welcome back to Career Center. I am joined by Becky Brillon, Program Director at the Community Career Center. And today we're going to discuss searching, job searching during the holidays. So Becky, welcome. Thank you. So Becky, um, I know that we hear a lot from our clients that this is just the time of the year to take off from the job search, take a break, relax. What are your thoughts on that? What are you hearing out there? It's tempting to do that because um, people get in a different mood, a festive, different mood. In job search, this time of the year can actually be a little bit more depressing than most other times. Um, it's, it seems that employers would be taking vacations, going out of town themselves, so why keep going? But it's very opposite of okay. what it should be. At this time of the year, there's less competition applying for jobs because Absolutely. people have that mindset that to it's slowing off. down. Yeah. So get, get, get the applications in. Anybody, and keep in mind, anybody who is hired in January, that's because they applied in December. Mm -hmm. So you can't take off. Yeah. And if you leave your job search for a couple of months or even just one month or a few weeks, you really do get out of the routine. Mm -hmm. You get out of momentum and it's really hard to come back in and, and be productive again. Right. Um, people think that you can lay off the job search and get refreshed. It really doesn't work that way. It's just going to be sitting there waiting for you, and it's going to be all new job search, like different agents, different, yeah. different everything when you start again. Yeah, and when you come back in January, there are so many people now that yeah. are... You know, Refresh, it's, the, it's the, the, the first of the year, it's time to get back out there. So now you're hitting the, the streets with a lot more people than what yeah. you would have been. Um, in fact, companies have, a, have budgets that they have to fill. Absolutely. So at the end of the year, they're trying to get people on the payroll. Yeah. You, know, you may not start until January, yeah. but they're really trying to... A lot of companies have a use it or lose it kind of policy when mm -hmm. it comes to their payroll mm -hmm. salaries. And a lot of companies are trying to just get in the hiring for so that they can hit the ground running in January when they start again first quarter. Mm -hmm. um, I know this time of year there's a lot of holiday parties and family dinners and things like that. And um, oftentimes people, you know, they don't want to go because they're going to hear, you know, Uncle, you know, Mike say, hey, listen, you know, how's your job search going? How do you get through that? How do you, how do you get through the... I don't want to hear these questions again. You're hoping that people are asking because they don't know what else to say or they're concerned for you. And rather than make it be something that, that gets under your skin or makes it harder to conduct your job search, use it to your advantage that people ask. Mm -hmm. When they ask, say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm not getting offers. It's not that I'm not doing interviews. I'm looking for the right offer, the right job. And actually, I could use your input. If you have mm -hmm. some time next week, why don't we get together and, and talk mm -hmm. and make Uncle Mike buy you dinner? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you, you may not know who's going to show up at these parties. Don't. You don't. You know, your neighbor yeah. may be, you know, friends with, you know, the CEO of a company who may show up at the Absolutely. party or, you just, or hiring manager. So you never know. Mm -hmm. So really get out there. Absolutely. It, it's so important. It's critical. Yeah. It, it, this is a, if it is an environment that is not typical from your normal day, your normal week, you need to go. Right. And you need to put on, you know, your, your best, your best persona as far as look at me, I'm available and, mm -hmm. and I'm for hire. Yeah. So, um, people should be prepared with business cards business or, cards. you know, talk, let's talk a little bit about business cards. I know when, you know, we talk about it at the center, Clients will look at us and say, well, how would I create a business card? I'm unemployed. It's just really a simple, basic card with, you know, the relevant information. Yeah. So how are people going to contact you afterwards? Yeah, you don't want to write it on a piece of paper. You don't want to have to write yeah. it on a piece of paper or a napkin or all those right. things. It just your name, address, uh, email address, not mm -hmm. your address, but your email mm -hmm. address, phone number. If you have a LinkedIn profile, you should, and mm -hmm. that should be on there. Mm -hmm. And maybe just a couple of words about the job title. Or, or the industry that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, another thing they should think about doing is uh, reestablishing connections, going back to maybe recruiters they had talked to earlier yes. in the year, yes. sending a holiday card, mm -hmm. not a Christmas card. Mm -hmm. 
Well, my favorite is you work with the auto reply emails. Chances are good that when somebody's on vacation for Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, mm -hmm. New Year's, the day before those holidays is typically when somebody would have an auto reply on their email. So when you send them an email, you're just sending an email. Maybe you're sending your resume saying, I'm still interested in your company. I wanted to send you an updated, updated resume. You, you get a response that says, I'm out of the office. If you need immediate assistance, please contact my assistant so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Well, now you've just doubled your connections in that company. Mm -hmm. You've got yourself a new person who might be filling in for a week, and well, maybe that's a new person to follow up with, a new mm -hmm. set of eyes. Mm -hmm. um, any other tips you have on the job searching during the holidays? Yeah, don't just don't lose momentum. Yeah, um, kind of what Connor said too. Just yeah. just don't let up, don't stop, and just keep in mind it, it really is. It's it's the time. January landings come from December applications, and you just have to keep going. And, and yes, do take some some downtime, a little bit, a day, two days around the holidays. Enjoy the parties, enjoy the festivities. Uh, change things to make it feel different, but but keep going. Keep going. Um, so let's talk a little bit about things going on at the center um, this month. Mm -hmm. We have our LinkedIn workshops, uh, basics and beyond the basics. We have a recruiter coming in. We try to get a recruiter in every month. Um, a company sends over an HR person. It's just 90 minutes to yeah. ask questions. And fabulous tips that we get from those tips. Amazing. Without because mentioning the last ask recruiter <laughs> we have, maybe we should share a couple of those tips that we Sure. Heard. It's, it's networking the right way. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be a pest. You don't want to be in somebody's face too much. Uh, follow the process. Companies cannot show favoritism in hiring. Yeah. You have to follow the rules, you have to follow the process. And a lot of the times they're testing to ask, can you follow directions? Mm -hmm. If it says apply this way, apply that way. Right, yeah. I think that was the biggest thing I got out of this mm -hmm. last recruiter. And they yeah. were really focused on that a lot. Yeah, you don't want to make more work for somebody because you're chasing people around trying to find connections into a company and then mm -hmm. that person has to get back to that person, this person, and mm -hmm. in addition to you. And right. Yeah, don't, don't make more work and, and, and eliminate questions on the recruiter about your resume. If there's right. too many questions about your application, it's yeah. just too many questions. Yeah. So as the recruiter, we also have our accountability groups, our networking groups. groups. The nonprofit the MAP group. is a great group that we started a couple years ago. Yep. It's like having a boss for your job search. A lot of people were missing the Monday morning planning meetings. Mm -hmm. And additionally, too, um, if, if holidays are a depressing time, this is doubly depressing because a lot of people were saying that Monday mornings they hear their neighbors getting ready for their car doors slamming and driving away. They see people walking out to their cars with their briefcases and backpacks ready to go to work. Well, you get to go someplace too. Right. You get to go to the center. You get to, you know, get ready for work and complain about the traffic, come over to the center and treat that like it's your job, because yeah. it is. It is. It really is your job. Well, Becky, thank you. I know uh, we have MAP still going on and, and um, our women's networking group and our men's networking group and not-for-profit groups and job clubs. So um, thank you for coming on and sharing information. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Drew Robertson, Connor Kaneen, and Becky Brillon for being a part of this month's edition of Career Center. If you are unemployed, underemployed, or seeking a, a career change, please visit us at the Career Center, 1815 West Steel Road, Suite 900 in Naperville. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next month.